Ready? Spin. I'm ready. Are you? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm not ready, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Here we go. I swivel too soon. I can never get the timing down, Scott. Did, is are you going to not even comment about my poor and swivel, well, swivel yeah. and poor? I I can't even get the swivel down, and you're swiveling and pouring a beverage. I don't even know how. Swiveling uh, and pouring. I'm taking it to the next level. Cheers. Cheers. I can't take it to the next level. We get. We need someone to take over, like the broadcasting part of it. Like we we really do. That's going to help us. Uh, uh, I don't know. Do you hear what I'm saying, though? I hear what you're saying. Mike, who are we and why are we here? What, who are we? We're the Land Geek guys. And we're here because, I don't know, it's 1030 on the East Coast. It's 930 in your world, 730 on the West Coast. People burn the midnight oil when it comes to land investing. So we like to get together, have a drink, and talk about land investing. And as I always tell people, if you're new to the show, if you're new to experiencing us, we take our businesses very serious, ourselves not so much. But especially you, huh? Especially you, I don't take very serious. <laughs> how's it going this week? Pretty good. How's uh, how's business for you? Busy, busy's good. Uh, as a sign that will soon adore my new office wall, will say, "Deal flow solves everything." You just can't see it yet, but it's gonna be there. Deal, flow, solves everything. Nice. Because I believe nice. that, right? I mean, the only way to get good at this business is to do land deals, right? Proof of concept. The only way to get efficient after you become effective is by uh, doing deals. So deal, flow, solves everything. Oh I, oh, I don't know if I should buy this land. It's got some two taxes too high. Oh, it's in probate. Oh, who cares? Get some more land. Deal, flow, solves everything. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. That too yeah. harsh. Was that too harsh? Not too harsh at all. No. I better crack open my it Kentucky bourbon. Might out. be a little too harsh, but it's not too harsh. It's not. So, uh, what are you drinking tonight? I have. What is that? It's Double tea. dry hop, pseudo Sioux pale ale. You this the is hops. The most... I can't handle the hops. You can't. Too bitter for you, huh? So I can go with a Kentucky bourbon ale. It's just a minor twelve percent. Yeah, I love bourbon ales. I've made my own bourbon ales before. They turn out very good. Awesome. Yeah. What are we talking about tonight, Mike? Well, you know, we're going to talk about land investing. However, I think uh, tonight, um, you know, it was kind of, you know, this topic came up between us, and I thought that uh, you could have presented, Scott, because, I, I, you know, I figured, you know, I'm going to be a little philosophical tonight because uh, what I do, and you're, you're pragmatic and, you know, more like get it done. That's why we're pragmatic. Get her done. I just use that. Is that guy like a Wisconsin? He's a Wisconsin guy. Get her done. No, that's uh, Larry the Cable Guy. I think he's in a Nebraska guy. Isn't that similar? Like guys like Navis to Nebraska? Yeah, or a couple states away. They all have same uh, same same football conference. Anyway, so tonight we thought it would be helpful to, you know, we always hear we always hear from people how in order to move the needle in this business. You need to be focused, okay. right? Yeah. You need you need one to two hours of very focused time per day, day. to move the needle. Day to move to move the needle in this business, yes. right? Yes. True. So True instead day. of using instead of using jargon, instead of just talking about focus, we thought we'd actually break it down tonight and actually give the community some tips and tools for actually focusing. What can you do during the day for an hour or two to really optimize your success, optimize your efficiency, optimize your time? Wow, I like that. Focus. What do you think? It well, you know what? I love it because focus does not come natural 
to me. It's just something that in my life, uh, I think I could probably recall a million times hearing my father say, you need to focus. You know, it's like in school, like, you know, get in here and focus and, and you know, try to, you know, do your best, study hard, you know, and try. And it's so hard, like this whole concept of trying to focus. Like, it's just almost, it's almost impossible when you put it in that terms, right? So, like, right, I think it's a good discussion to have. Like, how do you focus, especially related to land investing? That's the you complete me section. You complete me. That's you cool. complete me. So yeah, I think uh, it's a great topic that could truly help people, you know, in this business because there's only a few things really ha have to happen to make this business. We, we know there's two things that 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 uh, you can control, right? Two things, two gas pedals in this business, Scott. Tell me what they are. Mailing and marketing. That's it. It's like you got <laughs> you complete me. That's a that's a love story I've been told by my good friend boss man. You got it. You finally got it. It is a lot. You got these two gas pedals. You got a car, right? And this, and this car, this land investing machine, has got two gas pedals, mailing and marketing. Therefore, if you need to focus, that's where your focus needs to go. Now, we'll get into the second about how you even do that. But focus, if you're going to focus on anything, you might as well focus on the things that move the needle. Uh, don't exactly. focus on things like what let's talk about things you probably shouldn't focus on in the very beginning scott that'd be a good start wouldn't it things, well yeah sure what if, what are some things give me an example of something could you uh complete me here and let what's something that maybe i shouldn't put a ton of focus on in the beginning not to say it's a bad thing no uh so how about for me how about uh formulating your llc uh building your website Right, well, that's two. That's two good ones, right? And people always ask, do I need, yes, of course, of course, you um, you probably will end up getting some sort of DBA, L LLC or something like that, right? But in the beginning, I always feel that proof of concept is the most important thing. Like understanding that if you talk to anybody, right, and they do their first deal, I don't care how much money they make, that's, that's regardless of that, that's where the empowerment, where you have this uh, kind of, you know, epiphany, like I just did this. I just lifted myself up by my own bootstraps. I bought some land. I sold it. And we always say, if you can do one, you can do it. If you can do it once, you can do it 10 times, do it 10 times, you can do 100. So, uh, yeah. And that's the foundation of the business is the mailing and marketing, the buying and selling. So focus on that stuff first. Yes. So, so we thought we'd give the community some actual, like some actionable steps that you can utilize to become focused. And Mike, I'm a big believer in this first one. So do you know when you're most focused during your day? And maybe it's different for different people, but I think generally speaking, it's probably very similar for most people. I'm going to guess it's not 1039 on the East Coast. <laughs> right. <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're Scott Todd. He's, you know. He's I have a feeling Scott Todd, and not to call him out because I know he's always watching, I have a feeling he's a night owl. I've heard him on a few podcasts say, hey, nobody says you can't take a day off and fly a plane, uh, go on your boat, and work a business at night. So I don't know if he's out there. I have a feeling he's a bit of a night owl. I think so, too. But for the rest of us who are not necessarily in the same realm as Scott Todd, I think the majority of us uh, – for a majority of this, and this is actually well documented, the most focus that we have, the most creativity, the most clear we are in our thoughts is right in the morning when we wake up. Ah. So, you know, you, you've probably heard too that, that the, the most successful people in the world, the, the richest people in the world, millionaires, when do they get up in the morning? They get up at five in the morning. They spend the first two, sometimes they get up at four in the morning. They spend the first two to three hours of their day doing yeah. things. Uh, it's not that bad. It's not. It's Sorry. not. It's, he likes to make fun of my accent, folks. So every time I hear him say the word A, I can't help it. <laughs> so anyway, we're talking about the morning time. And, and I would have to say when I first, now I'm not as, I'm not as good at this currently. But three years ago, when I was motivated to change my life and I was focused, I was getting up at five in the morning. I can't tell you how productive I was between five and seven in the morning. 
every day. I would listen to podcasts. I would create lists for myself, uh, daily lists. What do I want to accomplish in a month? What do I want to accomplish in a year? Uh, I would, you know, I'm not, I guess I've never really meditated, but I would have some quiet time to myself, like thinking about what I want to, where I want to be a month from now or a year from now and visualizing that. So I think your morning time is really, really important. And I think if you can find the time to get up two to three hours before everybody else, you will have focus, you will have creativity. I like it. You know, um, here's the thing too, going along with that whole morning uh, kind of uh, idea of getting up in the morning, regardless of what time you get up, I, I was listening today to, uh, I forget the fellow's name, but it was on, a, a, you know, I like these uh, different YouTube, uh, you know, inspirational quotes and whatnot. I, you know, people that talk, I listen to it all. I just love that kind of stuff, right? So it was just talking about, you know, waking up with that right mental uh, mindset, right? And if you wake up, you know, they were t basically I was talking about how, you know, your body and your mind you can't distinguish your, you know, your mind really between sometimes real things and things that happened in the past. It's going to happen. So if you get up and you start worrying about things and you carry over all these worries from the night before and you wake up and you're already start to, you get this kind of really kind of edgy feeling that's not going to help. Right. But if you wake up and you, they talk about having gratitude in the morning, you know, feeling like, yeah, maybe, um, there's not maybe there's a lot of things to be grateful for then you start to shift your mindset into and you, you know the more you can kind of uh, visualize success the more that you can actually uh, you know be grateful and the more you can have this kind of rather than wake up and start worrying about all the bad things you know, that could go wrong or things that you need to do or all these uh, to-do lists that you know just kind of wake up and try to have a positive vibe to it right and I think waking up early does that, right? I think if you wake up early, then, um, you know, you tend not to be bothered by a lot of extra type activity because most people aren't up. You're not going to be get a ton of text messages. You're not going to get a ton of um, other people trying to contact you. So you really do have this, this buffer of time, right, that you can truly focus. So that's a, that's a really good point, Scott. Well, thank you. So I, so may, you know, let's talk about the next thing that that I thought would be helpful for for people, and I think you and I have talked about this. But um, you know, creating a to do list for uh, your day. Yes. Right. I mean, for my day, day. I'm you could have it. a. Yeah, I know. Uh, but but I'm big on to do lists. I mean, I love checking things off a list. So, I mean, I my to-do list is kind of very long. I know some people, they have a daily to-do list, to-do list, a monthly to-do list, but I like momentum. There's a great to-do list in there. There's a great to-do list in my Gmail. Um, uh, you know, so I think it, to have a to-do list for people is very helpful. And then I also think that, especially if you're at home and maybe you're in a little bit more charge of your time, that a schedule helps. What do you think of that, Mike? You know, you schedule for yourself. I do have some thoughts on that because, you know, I like the idea to do this. I like the idea of scheduling, but I also think it can get a little, it can get a little crazy, right? Down to the point of, you know, a la Scott Todd likes to, when I say breathe in the marketing, breathe out the mailing. And I, he says, don't forget to breathe. Like literally you could all of a sudden be like, you know, schedule everything out. So it's like, you can just get carried away with it. Right. So it can be, right. um, I've seen some people that talk about, you know, Maybe, uh, you know, you get this piece of paper, right? This uh, white piece of paper and you fold it into four sections and you just put one thing in each section, right? So now you have four things to do that day. Very simple. And don't overburden yourself because we all know if we put too much on the plate, uh, you're going to, you know, most likely not accomplish everything. And then you're going to have this negative feeling that you didn't do it. I love the idea of the one thing. I mean, there's a book out there about that, right? I love that. And, um, I, you know, I, I, I will talk to my son sometimes and he might be listening here. And I'm like, hey, Josh, what's the one thing you need to do today? Just the one thing that will move the needle forward. Like, what is it? Identify it and do it. Because if you knock that out of the park, uh, the rest of the day is going to feel awesome, right? And that could be something that's pretty challenging, right? But make that the one thing you're going to do. So lists, I think, are awesome. I just think that 
not to overexhaust them, right? Not to make them so large that it's like Santa's uh, list of presents for all the kids in the world. Like, I'm going to do all this today. We all know you're not going to, right? Let's just face it. You're not going to finish that, that you know, like that huge list you have there. But if you put one or two things on there, uh, and, and specifically about our business, Scott, you know, something that's going to move the needle mailing-wise and marketing-wise. And, you know, even if, well, I don't want to jump ahead. I'll say even if you don't have any property, right, because we do do blind ads and all that. But if you do something, one thing on each of those areas, you will have done something great for your business that day. So, yeah, lists are great, but let's keep them realistic. Let's keep them concise. Let's keep them on target. I, I love that. I mean, yes, I have a very long running list of things I always need to do, but I really do try to mark down one to two to maybe maybe three things if I have a lot of time that day to focus on for that day. Um, and I, I love the one thing, you know, I, I was going to bring that up as well. I'm glad you brought that up, you know, to, to what's that? I took your, took your topic, I feel like. I, I, we were just no. I felt it. I felt you going that way. Not at all. Not, yeah, you felt me going that way. You complete me. We're good. That's it. Another one. Sorry, Tom Cruise. Keep going. You know what though? I, I do have a I do have a new uh, a new I do have a new tip that I don't think anyone has ever spoken about before. Relative to this subject. Relative to the one thing. Let's hear it. Yeah. This is this is this pretty relevant right now. Let's hear it. All right. Okay. So here you go. I I found this new technique. All right. Okay. It's called it's called the Pomodoro technique. You ever heard of that? I might have, but I, I, you are know, you I, serious? You know, you know it. I, I, listen, I might have. I said, I'm not here. You know, I'm not the guy that I'm not the guy that spoils another guy's joke. That's not me. <laughs> I'm saying that Pomodoro I, technique. This is this is very scientific. All right. So what you do, you take a timer and you set it for 25 minutes. And you work on that one thing for 25 minutes. Look at that. When the timer goes off, it's <laughs> not a 25 minute timer. It's not. I work, in, I work in powerful small moments. Look at that. That's your Pomodoro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's your Pomodoro. <laughs> Have we talked about this before? I, I don't know. No, no, but this is, just, this is a visual. Keep going. because Yeah. A, the audience no, has love, a visual representation of what you're talking about. So continue. I love the visual. I love time. the visual hourglass. I love it. I love the visual hourglass. I use my timer all the time I'm on my phone. But set your timer for 25 minutes. Focus on that one thing. Take a five minute break. Right. Walk around the house. Walk the dog. Come back. Set the timer for 25 more minutes. If it takes you three or four cycles, but you get that one thing done. How great are you going to feel at the end of that, Mike? I'm going to use a word that I hear you say. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. You're going to yes. feel phenomenal. That's true because, look, at you take the one thing and you focus on it. Now, I, I, do, I do use this at, you know, at times just to kind of say, okay, I'm going to go over some email this long, right? And then right. I'm going to do something just to kind of – because there are certain things that are basically, a, a, for lack of a more eloquent word or words, a time suck. Right. They're going to like just drain you like and you start to get in this business. You will at some point have a lot of emails. So finding ways to to kind of uh, parse through those. And there are some techniques for that. Gmail is great for that. But focusing on being like, OK, well, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to just don't want to do it for so long. Right. And just while we're on that, like inbox by uh, in, Google has inbox. If you tried that, you can. Uh, there's another one called. Uh, um, What's the other one? The Google by in, Google inbox is a good one because you can kind of group them all together and delete them all at once. Clack clack clack, they're right. gone. Uh, so that works really well. Uh, but again, and do you know what? Do you know what I like that you introduced to me? What's that? Grow a tree. I wish I created that app. The Forest app. It's a right? phenomenal app. Tell us about the what app. A, what a great app for for focusing on work. one thing during the day. Doesn't work. So. So what you can do is you can you can um, you can set a timer for however long you want between 10 minutes and 120 minutes, okay? And you click start, and the app does not allow you to pick up your phone. By the way, if you so 
let's say I set my timer for 20 minutes and I want, I'm going to focus on this one activity for 20 minutes. Right. If I, uh, during that 20 minute time, I'm planting a tree in this app. Okay. Right. If I go to pick up my phone for, for, for whatever reason and, and I uh, interrupt the time that I have dedicated to whatever task, my tree dies. Don't kill a tree. Don't kill the tree. So the cool thing is a 20 minute task results in a certain type, type of tree. A, a 30 minute, 65 minute task results in another type of tree, right? And before you know it, after all of these tasks have been completed, you create kind of this forest for yourself and you kind of, I don't know, it shows productivity. It's kind of cool. You know what I like about the tree too? And I don't want to get too philosophical. Come on. But the tree is like it roots in the ground. So you root it, but at the same time, it reaches up to the sky and it's taking oh. it inspiration. And it's just this whole, this whole idea of a tree is so metaphorical of just awesomeness as a human, like what you could be like as a human, like you're rooted, you're reaching up for your goals you're focused. It's, I think the tree is a great representation. I think it's a great app. I need to use it more. I used it. I used it very faithfully for a couple of weeks and looking back, I'm like, yeah, I had a good couple of weeks. And I don't know. I, I think it's just like, it's, it's this day and age. Like we become so distracted. We find something we like, we use it for a while and then, Oh, there's this other thing you got to try. And then, oh, there's this other thing you got to try. Like, I don't know. It's really hard in this day and age, isn't it, to stick with what works because it's just continual process improvement on everything. Well, they're all trying to get at the same thing. They're really trying to – the whole idea, that I guess the root of what we're talking about here is habit formation. Right. It's not so much – I mean, I was I, – I was, it was put to me like this years ago, and I believe it. It's not so much you have to get rid of your bad habits as you have to build – more good habits because the more good habits you have will take away the time and the effort from the bad habits so just keep focusing on the good ones and all these the pomodoro technique or or using uh, the forest app momentum all these things they're meant to really try to create some sort of continued activity day after day that becomes habitual right so the mailing and market something that has to all of a sudden become just like brushing your teeth tying your shoes walking uh, mailing and marketing should be that uh, natural to your business so I love it. I got to ask you though, anybody commenting on Facebook? Are we watching this? Because I don't know if anybody's even watching right now. Any comments? No, 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 no. We, we do have some comments. Uh, so I'm going to pull them up here. We got some good viewership tonight. Um, Paul Bellotti is watching. You'll get a kick out of this, Mike. He said, uh, hey, I made it live. First time not watching these stars on YouTube reruns. <laughs> <laughs> Soon to be Netflix. One day, one day he hopes to meet us in person. Well, he hope to meet you too, Paul. That's Come awesome. Orlando. We're going to be in Orlando in less. It's, I love this. We just got done uh, Arizona. We're going right to Orlando in October. It's going to be awesome. So come to Orlando. Yeah, come to Orlando, Paul, for sure. Uh, Sandy Marrero Sai says she's most focused in the morning, but I'm at my. I, she's at her full job at that time. She gets up at five every morning to make her 45 minute commute. Uh, so Sandy, but isn't that an amazing time in the morning to listen to Land Geek podcasts? Yes. Like I'd be all over that. And hello, Sandy. <laughs> nice. To, we, we just saw Sandy in uh, Arizona. It's great to see she's watching. All right. Let's see. Let's see what else. Barbara Thibodeau is watching as always. Um, Uh, Sandy also says, Tony Robbins says, focus on outcomes, not activities. It's true. Incremental tasks are what you get, are what get you to your goal, but the focus must be on the goal. Then you need to reverse engineer on how you get there. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it because it's so true that you could get caught up in all the details. Like you could get your whole day, your whole focus could turn into like how to structure your to-do list, how to make it the best to-do list, how to... And really, the two, it's like the old Bruce Lee from um, Enter the Dragon. It's like a finger pointing to the moon. And, the, and then the, the, the young pupil looks at his uh, finger and he's like, don't stare at the finger. You'll miss all the heavenly glory. It's the same thing. <laughs> don't focus on the to-do list. It's just a tool. It's to carry you to where you need to go. So 
That's a great point. Where, who made that? Was that Barbara? San, Sandy brought that up again. Sandy, great point. That was awesome. Thank you, Sandy, very much. So I think, you know, we've been, we've been, uh, we've been talk, talking a while. We should probably take a little breather and invite our good friend in. Oh, all right. Let's do it. Let's see. For the refill segment. So coming from the attendee role all the way up to panelist, Matt Ford. <laughs> Oh, and, and yeah. all the way from all the way from panelists. How exciting! <laughs> Great, Matt. We've missed you. Where have you been the last few shows? This has been really all right. So yeah. I couldn't go to uh, the last boot camp, and it was it actually made me rather sad. And oh, um, depressed. And then I went to bed early last week and completely just uh, forgot about everything. Orlando disaster no i'm in for orlando i'm gonna uh i got i booked my hotel and the flight i just need to email um whoever and danielle, danielle. Yeah, i gotta email danielle and, and actually get a ticket you know the, the magic thing. behind the scenes danielle she makes everything yeah. happen she's awesome so uh yeah so uh i'm drinking um something i just found in my basement um it's a mystery it's uh i don't know when is, is it one of those sparkling uh I think it's a sparkling seltzer from my wife. She just sort of handed it to me and said, drink that. So, nice. yeah, spiked seltzer. Well, we're going to see how this goes. Excellent. I'm going to take Sorry. my pseudo sue. How impressive is that? There we that? go. All right. Bring them up. You guys have all been working hard, mailing, marketing, having hot dogs. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. I, mm. Mm. That's actually what I get for not being on the last two shows. There it is. Yes. <laughs> Be back next week with some bourbon. Spike Gatorade. Yeah, that is god awful. Okay. Matt. Okay, then. We are happy to have you here. You're going to stick around for the final salute, aren't you? I'll be here drinking uh, this. Maybe I can do better. Maybe I'll take a little breather and find something better. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Our official refill segment. Cheers. Matt Forbes. Thank you. Moving you back down to. Tendy, see you in a minute. So happy, right. with Matt. We missed him. Yeah, it's it hasn't been the same without Matt. I would totally it has not been the same. Totally no. same. So yeah, um, here we are talking about focus. Yeah, focus and and concrete things that we can do to improve our focus. Actionable things. Yeah, and I think again the whole the whole idea is to create habits, I think. Like focus and habits kind of go hand in hand because, I mean, we all have habits, right? It's just not all of them serve us in the best way possible, right? So it's like, how do you, you know, change those over to some some uh, more positive things? Well, in our business, again, you need to focus. And here's the thing too, another uh, focus type activity. If you get at the beginning of the week, there's ways you can line up. So all your mailing is ready for that week. All your marketing is ready for that week and you just have it all set, ready to go. Then you give yourself a big pat on the back because you really have done a lot to move the needle throughout the rest of the week. So, uh, you know, I think that's another option, right? Just, you know, getting things ready, like setting the groundwork in place, focusing on the, on that type of activity. Yeah, so uh, you're talking about uh, focusing on uh, foundational things for the week, right? Focusing on tasks that will um, bring you tax, okay, actionable tasks that will cause you to be uh, disciplined, right? Right. Like we need discipline in this, in this business also. So if you can create kind of a schedule for yourself or a to-do list or that one thing, that will help you become disciplined in this business. It will help you form a habit, right? I feel like Master Yoda right now. Remember when he said uh, anger leads to hate and hate leads to the dark side? Yes. Well, it's like uh, uh, act, uh, scheduled s schedules lead to, um, what am I going to say? Schedules lead to action, which lead to discipline, which lead to habits. Yes. Huh? 
Yes, yes. Now, well, you go good. back to our ADHD segment. You yeah, kind of I did. Which was really good. Well, we talked about how to, you know, uh, accountable and drug old habits and discipline, uh, you know, so that type of thing. Uh, but yeah, very, very well, it's all connected, right? I think success in and of itself, it, it comes from some core principles and those are the ones we focus on. Um, and so absolutely, I think it's all connected, right? Totally is, yes, everything's connected. You're, you're absolutely right. What, I, what, what, I know you're laughing at me right now. Well, I don't know if you're uh, going to do that one. I was just like, what? I feel like no, 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 no. <laughs> I wouldn't make fun of you, Mike. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever. And I, I, I do apologize. I just kind of looked at the, uh, the comments too. And, and, I, and, and uh, this is going to be more colorful. Right now. It's yeah, just, I got things planned back here too. This is a fresh new paint job. I'm just showing that off right now. But there's some things coming right there. Coming soon. We got, we both have things planned. It's very exciting. <laughs> you know what though? I think we need to, we need to lighten things up here a little bit. All right, let's do it. Okay, so uh, this this is our most popular segment with the community, so I've been told. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you love this one. It's time for the Boston Lega segment. The Boston Lega. The Boston Lega segment. And uh, I, mean, I made a new, made a new technological uh, visual aid here. This is my favorite to date. The cheetah. The cheetah. Yeah. I love this one. The cheetah. Don't ever play cards with a cheetah. Don't ever play cards with a cheetah. All <laughs> right. Keep your money so, every time. For those of you who haven't seen, this is the segment where uh, the community learns a new Bostonian word. And uh, it's either a word that's commonly mispronounced by Bostonians or a slang word. We haven't done any slang words yet. That's what I'm going to do next week. I've been having too much fun with the mispronounced words. So here's what happens. I'm going to spell a word, Mike. Okay. okay. You're, going to, you're going to repeat that word back to me. All right. I can do that. You ready? I'll give you the correct pronunciation. Excellent. Here we go. L-I-Q-U-O-R. Licka? Licka. 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 Like beer. Licka. Like beer. Like yes, beer. exactly. Uh, or, you know. How else like would you say that word? I'm curious. of the citizens of the United States say it would be liquor. I don't know about that. It sounds the same to me. Liquor. Liquor. Sandy loves your accent. You know that with the Boston accent, you can actually have more efficient, quicker conversations because we just cut out the inefficiencies when it comes to language. Is that right? You know, like when you read a book, you don't have to, you ever notice you yeah. can actually read and like skip lines and still get the concept? Same thing. You just, uh, you'd like take a word from three syllables to two. Just slice it out. There's no need for it. Yeah, it's much more efficient. Yeah, I can see that. That's a great argument. <laughs> Mike, is there anything else that that's concrete, that, that's an actionable thing that people can do to, to maintain their focus? What, anything you can think of? Well, I, I do. I think that one of the things that destroys focus is this whole negative self-talk, self-talk, and things like that. Things come in your mind. I mean, it can get, it can get pretty. Um, at certain times, I mean, it can get a little discouraging. Certain things. Maybe you're having a hard time with your marketing, or maybe you're having a hard time with your mailing, right? And you just get these kind of negative thoughts come in. So, you know, I like to have this kind of mantra of like, knock, you know, knock it off, cut it out, knock it off, cut it. Out. Just like mentally remove that right and if you have to physically say that that's i mean this whole idea of mantra repeating things i mean because mantra right you repeat things to yourself all the time and, and it could be just something on the negative side how many times uh do people say things like oh man i'm just never gonna get this right i'm just never gonna get it that, well that's like a mantra you're saying to yourself you're never gonna get it now you will get it so why put that negative you know so i think yes there's ways of kind of Things that get in the way of focus is this negative self-talk. So if you can remove that or even become conscious of it, right? Just like when people a lot of times, I don't know where you are, but where I am, people love to say, hey, how's it going today? What are you doing? How, how's it going? Oh, living the dream. It's like this common like phraseology that people say. It's just things that people say over and over again. And they, 
And they, it just because they hear everybody else say it and then they say it. But you know what? It does impact you inside. Like, because typically living the dream means you're not really happy with the job. Like where I come from, it's like, yeah, living the dream. Like it means I'm here at work, I'm doing it, but <laughs> I don't really like it, right? And so that's kind of negative, right? So I think just becoming aware of things like that can help you be more focused because, you, you know, you won't be so, uh, you know, tempted to repeat those and get caught. It's like, a, I think I love the word meme, like a thought process that you get involved in, right? And it, it's contagious, right? If you hang around with people that have these thought processes, they're going to start hooking to you and you're going to start repeating them and you're going to stop then believing them. And that's going to ruin your focus. I really think that ties into focus, right? I think there are certain streams of thinking that lead to success. So when you surround yourself by people, we all hear about the five people you surround yourself with, right? Well, we surround ourselves, look at, you know, we have uh, Mark Podolsky, we have Scott Todd, we have uh, Tate Litchfield, Eric Peterson, Mimi Schmidt, I have Eric, I have uh, Scott Bossman here. And we have all these people, then the people we work with, we surround ourselves with people who are succeeding, then success doesn't become something special it becomes something kind of normal right it's kind of like that's the expected thing the bar is you succeed right so and and, and, and you may have some problems right with it but you know that that's not the ultimate end of it you're going to succeed so i think that gets in the way of focus i really do that's sorry awesome. i get all philosophical you do get very philosophical but i love it i think everybody loves it honestly uh, Daniel Larson says, read Mindset by Carol Dweck. Okay. It's great for promoting a growth mindset and gives the scientific evidence of why it's so important. Right. Nice. That sounds good. Thank man. you, Daniel. That's awesome. Good tip. Always looking for a new uh, Audible book. Hopefully it's on Audible. I love, as we all know, my favorite new guru is Ray Dalio. Yes. Uh, if you want to talk about focus... You know, and he's a prolific meditator. Um, I think that, that there's some something to be said for collecting your thoughts, especially in the morning. Uh, it doesn't have to be some long, drawn out, like hour long affair. It could be just a few moments of catching your awareness and then moving into the day purposefully, right? Having a purpose as opposed to just kind of being ping ponged around or what's that game? You know, ding, 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 ding. What's that game? Uh, pinball? Pinball, yeah. Not being a pinball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't be the pinball and don't be like bing, ding 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 you know don't be a pinball don't be a pinball hmm. what do you want to be mike what instead of being a pinball we should you know, look at a game i like yeah. bowling like whack. oh <laughs> nice that's good yeah good the good. ball and pinball like, ding, 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 ding. and that's like a good representation of no focus no goal ping pong game i mean a pinball right. game Focus, goal, bowling right down the middle, full strike. Is that even a word, full right. strike? But it's not a half strike. It's a full strike. Awesome. No, Good work. Strike. I apologize. So <clears throat> two other things I guess I would say. Let's hear is, it. In this day and age, how much extraneous noise is there? Like how many of us get stuck scrolling through Facebook and realize, you know, 15 minutes later, I've done absolutely nothing with myself. Um, so I don't know. I think my advice would be to, to unplug multiple times a day. Oh. Unplug, get away from the noise. It's so prevalent. It's crazy. I mean, it affects, it affects your thinking. It affects your focus. It affects your family life. Uh, I think it affects your, your ability to be profitable in your business. So Unplug, get away from things, take the dog on a walk, spend time with the kids, rejuvenate yourself multiple times a day. And because, uh, you know, how much of our business is online, Mike? 95% of it, right? Right. So uh, it's, it, it's hard sometimes, I think, to step away. Uh, and then we, we work in this environment online where there's so much noise and so much distraction, it's very easy to get pulled away from what you should be doing. So I don't know, set, set, a, set a timer for yourself, a Pomodoro timer to unplug as well. And then, uh, you know what really helps me? And I think there's some evidence to, to show this. What's that? Plants grow better with music. I, when I'm listening ah. to the right music, 
when I'm listening to the right music, I work better. I like now, it. Yeah. So I think, you know, classical music, I, I turn on classical music, I turn on, in, uh, you know, Minnesota Public Radio, classical music, whatever, when I'm working. Did you ever see like Christian Bale in that movie, The Big Short? And he's like at the, like the speed rock. Some people can even focus to like heavy metal. It's like, yeah, you're right. Keeps you in the zone. Yep. You're right. So That's those are my point. two uh, suggestions. I, I, I want to throw out a challenge since we're talking about focus to the, all the listeners out there, the hundreds of people that are watching us live right now. What yes. It? What is the challenge? I want everybody to double their mailings this week. Focus on mailings, double your mailings, and guess why? Because the imaginary sign that you can't see right here, but which will be here soon, says deal flow solves everything. So focus nice. on the one thing you can control, and that's the gas pedal, well, one of the two things, the most primary left side equation thing you can control, which is the buy side, double your mailings this week. Do it. I challenge every one of you to double your mailings. I don't care if you usually do 500, do 1,000. If you usually do 200, do 4, if you do 100, do 200, double it for one week and just watch that deal flow increase. Jake Martin, Lisa Torres, Daniel Larson, Barbara Thibodeau, Sandy. Who else? Justin Patterson. I, I'm calling I, you out. Matthew Forbes, Paul Bellotti. I think Tim yeah. Evans is talking about a good topic for a book. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to write that book. Nobody steal that title. I'm writing that book. Deal flow solves everything. <laughs> all you guys double your mailings and then joshua anderson double yours too and then come back to us here with your reports today is august 18th 2000 oh wait what is it august 16th 2018 you're, you're, doubling gonna your hurt, you're never gonna hurt yourself by doubling your mailings you're only gonna make it better you're exactly right go for it think big you know what if you mail so much that you cannot handle the intake like mark Podolsky always says, you have a new problem, but a good problem. Now you need an intake manager. You just created a great problem. Someone to pass through all those accepted offers and counter offers, and you're about to make some serious coin. So create the problem. Don't be comfortable. In the beginning, yes, 20 a day, get 100. Scott does that because it's manageable. But then think bigger. Mail so much that you can't handle the intake, and you have to hire someone to do it. Do it. That's awesome. Good suggestion, it's Mr. Zaino. Challenge. We have a question from Roger McDougal. Yes. Roger, we hope you're well. We had an awesome time uh, interacting with you at boot camp. Hopefully you're coming to Orlando. Um, so Roger says he's trying to focus, huh? Trying to focus on our marketing and our Craigslist ads are getting removed this week. Any suggestions? Yeah. Well, you know, that's the bear that everybody wrestles with in this business, right? Craigslist is like this bear with like eight, eight arms and eight legs. And it's just like two so miles. Hard. Yeah. So, you know what? Here's the great thing, though. Even if your ad, I always tell people, even if your ad only made it up there for five minutes, right? Or a minute, doesn't matter. Remember the whole analogy to the parade, right? The whole idea is that your advertising is like a moving parade. And this parade is a mile long. And if you get a couple ads out there, your parade went about five feet. Great. Someone in the first five feet may, in fact, buy your property. And you know what? That does happen sometimes. I've had it just recently, too. A couple ads go out, bang, property sold. Not typical. Not, the, not always that way. Many times, you have to get that parade all the way down to, the, like, three-quarters of the way, half a mile. That's your marketing. So you have to continually be posting. And, yes, Craigslist is out to get you. They don't like you doing this, right? They don't want you to do this, but you still keep going at it and focusing. Now, is there special techniques? Of course there is. You know, we have Scott Todd who created an incredible course on this posting domination. Uh, you can take that posting domination and you can train your uh, V. You can, if you want to get better at this, you would actually work with a virtual assistant. As, you, as soon as you grasp the idea, you get someone on board, you train them, and you have them scale your results so that – uh, you know, how do you scale yourself? Well, you have somebody else do it for you, right? So it's, it's, if he's looking for, in terms of the specific nuances, you know, that's, that can get a little technical, I guess. But I guess the overall thing, which I think I'd like to say to Roger, is don't be beat down by it because everybody goes through this, right? And there is light at the end of that tunnel, right? Because the more that you 
go in and you go through these process of posting and figure out how to set up your, uh, you know, all that. I don't want to give away any see, Give The more you do the process, the better you're going to get. And every time you do it, you're putting ads out there. Someone's going to see it. And that right person will see it. It's a volume game. Remember, mailing and marketing, the only thing you control in this business, and they both are basically the same. They're both advertising. One is looking for someone to raise their hand and say, I'd like to sell my property. And the other one's looking for someone to raise their hand and say, I'd like to buy the property. It's the same. It's all volume. You know, so if you get frustrated with that, take a break, go on Facebook. Um, my son just sold a property on Facebook over the weekend. Just go on there, post something and, and sell it that way. There's buy, sell groups, you know, and, and, and explore that. If you haven't, uh, if, you, if that's getting you down, go over and look at eBay. There's ways you can look at eBay, right, to, to use that. I know Mark, he's listening, not a big fan of eBay, but you can make money on eBay. Uh, you can make a lot of money on eBay. It's just a matter of how you do it. So um, right. I don't know if that's... I, it's, it's a difficult process, but you know what? It's something that can be overcome with uh, time and effort. So focus on just and, keep going. And, and Roger, I guess what I would say is, I mean, if you're, if you're getting flagged, you know, in a particular account, create a new account, create a new account with a new phone number and uh, try that. And uh, I know you've been in flight school. Scott Todd probably taught you some things in flight school uh, about uh, success in Craigslist. So, so take a look at that stuff again. Uh, and then, like Mike said, uh, Facebook can be really powerful. You know, we had a huge cash sale last week uh, from a Facebook lead. So uh, get in those buy, sell, trade groups. And I, I think you just you really need to be present no matter where you are. You need to be present on Facebook, present on Craigslist, present with your buyers list. You know, I had a, I had a sale a couple of weeks ago with a, from a buyer's list uh, client. So, I mean, that's, that's really the, the secret I think to all this is just being present. And um, you know, the, the, it, again, like you said earlier, Mike, it all comes down to mailing and marketing, mailing and marketing. So to focus on those two things every day, no matter what, and then bring the other stuff in later, that's really going to help. Yeah, and you look at the steps that you go through to post these ads, right? And you could say that, you know, break them down into the micro steps. And if there's some, you know, then, and then just focus on those micro steps, take blocks of time, right? And focus on them. So you, you know, you really, you know, just the biggest thing is just don't be beat down by it because it works. There's plenty of us out here that are doing it on a consistent basis, consistently making sales. And we're no different than you. It's just that we've kind of stayed the course, stayed with it and adjust it as necessary and stay consistent. Exactly right. Good question oh, though. What? I said it was a good question. It was a great question. Thank you, Roger. So what do you think, Mike? I think we're, uh, you know, we're probably uh, time to bring in the final, is there any other thing you wanna do before we finally toast this? No, I think the, the one last thing I would recommend to people and, uh, we touched on it a little bit earlier, but this was going to be kind of my closing piece of, uh, of advice is to check out The One Thing by Gary Keller. Uh, it really helps with focus. It's a great book. It's worth multiple reads. It's worth, I, I read it and I listened to it and uh, really helped me out. So uh, check that out. And uh, I think that'll really help your focus game. I love it. And I'll, I'll throw out the same thing I did in the round table the other day, Ray Dalio's principles for success. It's on YouTube. You don't have to listen to his audible book. That's really long. I'll read his thick book. It's if you search YouTube, Ray Dalio principles for success, he'll talk about, and this goes good with what Roger was saying, this idea of running, uh, heading for a goal, but hitting an obstacle going around it and continuing. So I think that that is pretty, is it apropos? How do you say that for, uh, apropos? Nice. For, uh, well, How do you spell Dalio, Mike, again? D-A-L-I-O, Ray Dalio, Principles of Success. It's a great YouTube. It's really an awesome, uh, YouTube video to watch. It, it really, uh, illustrates his principles for success. And, um, I think everybody will get something out of that, honestly. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, we listed some resources for you guys in the, uh, in the comments and, uh, as always, we appreciate you watching. Spread the word, share on your timeline. And here comes from the role of panelist. No, from the role of attendee to panelist. Uh-oh, there he is. There he is. Hi. Whoa, that was some crazy color you just had on you there, Matt. Yeah. 
That's no, I sure. put the lights on like, uh, you know, right Otto, right. It's a freaking dance party in Massachusetts, man. Come on. <laughs> I know you know the truth. There it is. See? Bosman's doing yeah. it. Come on, Mike. Get on board. I got to get my lights, all right? This is the yeah, office. I got new office. Look how big it is. I can come way back here. I love the remotes for my lights. They're very really cool. Yeah. So, so here's what happens. Bossman, right? So I, I work from home, right? I'm a sales guy. So I'm on Zoom calls all day long, and my kids come down and they take the remote and then they turn these things on. So I'm like, oh, I know. trying to have a sales conversation, and then uh, and then I'm in I'm in you know bright red and I'm showing my true colors. I feel like you're in an ABBA video all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. ABBA. Video. Yeah, I, I know it's happened to me as well. How how long is that video, uh, Mike? Is that uh, 30 minutes? The uh, Ray Dalio video. Yeah, is that right? It does all his principles. Uh, of success in a 30 minute video it's it's animated it's really awesome yeah i'm looking at it uh i'm gonna watch that tomorrow that sounds pretty Thanks. awesome that's a great tip awesome totally worth it's staying really... up till 11 45 at night wow it's time scott let's get that toast what is it jesus oh the toast uh you know what here's the focus here's the discipline here's the habit here's to financial and time freedom through land investing Here's to you, monkeys. Licka is quicker. Nice job, boy. Licka. Well, guess what? I'm going to queue up the outro. You guys outro. Talk amongst, yourself, talk, talk amongst yourselves. Oh, my. Oh, I'm going to stroke. It's, just, it's crazy down here now. It's uh, The basement's out of control. Oh, it was great seeing you guys. You guys ready for the outro? Mike. Yeah. We see it. We don't hear it. Oh, dance along to the outro. We'll see you guys next week. Listen, don't be afraid to put comments in of what you like. We are, we are always looking for new subject matter. We'll talk about anything you guys want us to. So yeah. bring it on. Yeah. Ask your questions. They're the experts. I just drink alcohol. <laughs> Not very good. Scotty's so happy to do it. Sorry, Bill.